today, Sunny 95. Feel good. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man on the street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of the Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode number 588 of The Reasons We Smile. Okay, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today we're bringing you the complete guide to Easter candy. Happy Easter, everyone. It's uh, going to be a beautiful day, I believe. I think some uh, sun up is uh, happening. And so uh, let me just tell you that before we get started, I'd like to remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Also, all past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. And we're streaming live on Facebook, so I always give a little wave to the Facebook friends. In about 10 minutes, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. And flowers are always uh, special on Easter and in spring in general. People are thinking about picking up their flowers. Of course, they say don't put them in the ground until after Mother's Day, but I know everybody wants to anyway. And if you do, you have to cover them up. (laughs) But anyway, okay, so I hope you're going to have a wonderful Easter. And yes, I am live in the studio, along with my producer, Jared. (laughs) We are here indeed. (laughs) So anyway, um, like I said, we're going to bring you the complete guide of Easter candy. And a couple of these, uh, my information comes from, there's one called askthedentist.com. It's a gentleman named Dr. Mark Burheny. And then another bit of information comes from uh, the University of Rochester. It was an article that was reviewed by... Uh, three folks, I'll go ahead and give their name now. Marianne Foley, RNBSN. Michael, Michael, is it Kapner or Kampner? I can't read my own writing. I think it's Kapner, uh, MD. And Paula Good, RNBSN, MSN. Okay, so we'll get that out of the way. Not everything I'm going to tell you is from them, but I want to give them props for the work that they did. Okay, so here are my tips for which Easter candy to go for and which to skip, as well as some of... Um, Uh, the favorite healthy swabs that might indulge your sweet tooth this Easter. So watching our kids hunt for eggs on Easter morning can be some of the uh, fondest memories that we may have as a parent. But when you go to the grocery store around Easter time, you see that there's so much junk out there, right? I mean, it's like everything has been turned into candy. (laughs) There's candy corn, right? There's candy peanuts. Uh, I haven't seen any candy uh, steak or anything, but there's candy apples. (laughs) There's no candy chicken that I know of, although you can put that barbecue sweet stuff on it. Anyway, so uh, obviously marketing Easter candy has become a big business. and it, uh, But it can be our children who lose, all right? So something I've learned a long time ago, sugar breeds sugar. So if you have something sweet, you want something else that's sweet. Um, salty, salt uh, breeds salt. That's why when you have popcorn, you want more popcorn, okay? So you do have to be careful about getting setting up this pattern of eating a sweet and then eating another sweet and before you know it you're one of these people who have uh, tooth tooth decay right so um, so sometimes you know some people think even this just once candy can alter our taste buds buds making uh, us crave worse foods in the following weeks and months it's these just this once holidays where children learn what's normal and where they develop habits they keep for the rest of their lives okay now later on in the show I may as well mention it now but I'll probably bring it up later which is uh, once you um if you're going to eat candy, it's best to just eat it all and get it over with. Don't like graze on candy. Don't have it a little bit all during the day because now you're attacking your teeth all day rather than uh, eating it all down in 10 minutes or whatever, half hour, and then being done with it, okay? So keep that in mind. Uh, the same thing applies for soda pop. So the people that have 
Mountain Dew Mouth. You've heard of that, Mountain Dew Mouth. It looks like met- meth mouth, all the terrible decayed teeth. Uh, they sip Mountain Dew all day. And I tell people, hey, it's okay to drink Mountain Dew. Just drink it down, drink the whole can in five or ten minutes to be done with it. Rinse your mouth out with water afterwards. And by the way, uh, if you take a sip of Mountain Dew or any soda pop, it doesn't have to be Mountain Dew. If you rinse your mouth out with water afterwards, take a sip of pop, take a sip of water, that goes a long way to decrease the pH quickly, and you don't get that acid attack. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but I didn't want to forget. Okay, so some of this sounds serious, but uh, you know, I promise it doesn't have to put a damper on your Easter holiday. I actually have a sweet tooth myself. There's a little container of a little, those little toy, not toy, but those little tiny candy bars sitting next to where I sit watching television. So I like to be pragmatic. You know, if you tell a child don't eat candy ever, that's all they're going to want. And the same with an adult, by the way. You tell anybody something they shouldn't do or can't do, that's going to be what they want to do. So it's, it's all in how you do it, folks, and uh, trying to make sure that you still have teeth when it's all said and done. <laughs> so try it right. I mean, you know, the teeth are supposed to last a lifetime. We're all living longer than we ever did. So it's even more important that we take care of our teeth uh, at a young age be, so that we'll still have them. Because I think the um, lifespan for women has increased to something like 82, I believe, and men 86. And so, anyway, okay, so uh, here are some quick tips to prevent cavities after eating candy. This is the part that's going to be important to you when we do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. So listen carefully, although I usually reiterate and try to make it simple. But yes, we are going to give uh, away free flowers in about five minutes or so, five or six. And this is what it's going to be about. Number one, eat candy with plenty of water. Water helps neutralize the acids produced by the bacteria. By the way, again, this is from Dr. Ben Henney. Okay, these are his, and I agree with him. Uh, from askthedentist.com. All right, so, and I just kind of mentioned it, you know, just like I said with soda pop, you can eliminate the, uh, the acidity of the pop by, having, um, by put, uh, having a drink of water. We can do the same thing with candy. Okay, after you're done eating the candy, swish vigorously with water, because this is going to help shake loose the bits of sticky candy that get stuck not only between your teeth, but in the biting surfaces of your teeth. Okay? They're down in there. And um, so then when candy gets stuck in your teeth, those bacteria can have a heyday of, of a feast and continue excreting acid all day long until you get home to floss and brush that chunk out. You don't want that. You don't want anything stuck in your teeth, in between your teeth, on your teeth at all. And if there's no food, there's nothing for the bacteria to live on. So they don't really do any damage because they're not excreting acid. Number four is wait to brush. Don't go brushing your teeth right after you've had candy. Wait a while. Why? Because the acid that's created by those bacteria is now on your tooth surface. It's on the enamel. So the enamel has been slightly softened in that area. And if you wait 30 minutes, it's going to kind of remineralize. But if you don't, now your toothbrush can brush off that little thin layer of uh, uh, softened enamel. Okay? And the same thing happens with wine, uh, especially white wine. I did a show about wine several years ago. And we mentioned that after you've drink, had a drink of wine, don't go brush your tre- teeth right away for the same reason. The acid has softened the outer enamel coating. Okay? So, here are, and remember, those are the uh, important points. I'll reiterate them. It is, one, eat candy with plenty of water. Two, swish vigorously with water afterwards, after eating candy. Three, don't snack all day. Oh, I think I'm, I didn't mention that one, yeah. Uh, you don't snack all day. You eat, you eat all of it at once. It's better than spreading it out over days or weeks. If you're going to expose your, so your uh, teeth to acid, do it for as little time as possible. So that was three. And then four was waiting to brush. Don't brush until at least 30 minutes after having eaten candy, okay? All right, the next thing we're going to cover is the best and worst Easter candy. So not all, indul- indulg- not all indulgences are created equal. Here's how Easter candy stacks up from the best to the worst choices. And um, let's see here. Oh, okay. So the worst offenders are sticky candy. The stickier candies do more damage to teeth because they get stuck in the teeth, allowing the bacteria to feast and excrete acid all day long until you get home. Um, This includes dried fruit, by the way. Dried fruit is sticky. Raisins are sticky. Dried apricots. Yes, they're healthy for us, but they're sticky. They have sugar in them. Bacteria are going to thrive on the sugar and create the acid. So just because it's health food, healthy for us, doesn't mean it's healthy for our teeth. And there is a difference, and we need to be aware of that. Okay? Any candy that takes a long time to eat. So the more you expose your teeth to sugars and acids, the more time the bacteria can get to feast 
and excrete the acids. So sucking on lollipops or a chocolate bunny all day does far more harm than eating the same amount of candy all in one quick setting. Also, the wor one of the worst offenders is anything gummy. Gummy candies can be the most acidic, and acid is what is what damages the teeth. So you're getting a pattern here, right? <laughs> There's definitely a pattern. Okay, um, the best sweets would be dark chocolate. Chocolate is actually good for your teeth. It actually has antioxidants. It's actually good for us. Okay, now properties in chocolate have been proven to be better than fluoride in strengthening enamel. Just keep it to 75% and above if you can. Now what that means is that's the percent of cocoa. So there's this dark, dark chocolate. Then as you notice, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. Well, the darker it is, the healthier it is for us. And with the antioxidants, I mean, we're talking about, you know, kale. if, if kale has 200 um, milligrams of whatever, this would have 2,000. I mean, it, it is really good for us. The problem is, is the darker you get, the harder it is for me to eat because it's like, not are you no, you're no longer in the semi-sweet category. You're in the bitter category in my taste buds. But anyway, <laughs> but it is good for you if you can do it. So if you can raise your kids on this bitter chocolate <coughs> so their taste buds can learn the difference and can appreciate this high-quality chocolate, that would be helpful to them. So think about it. If a child is never given anything but um, uh, semi-sweet chocolate, 75% cocoa and above, they may not know that there's something out there that's sweeter. Trying to keep that from them is probably going to be impossible, but anyway, <laughs> what can you do? All right, so the next thing would be, uh, of the best sweets, would be candy bars with nuts. Nuts can break up the stickiness of a candy bar as well as break up some of the biofilm on the teeth. All right, so there are some neat ones out there. You could try some, there's this one brand called Kind Bars with uh, flavors like, uh, like dark chocolate, nuts, and sea salt. Dark chocolate, nuts, and sea salt. That just sounds, sounds good. Okay, it's a little bit like a uh, power bar, okay? And then another one of the best sweets would be homemade baked goods with monk fruit, sweetener, or coconut sugar. Both of these sugar alternatives have a low glycemic index and are less damaging to the teeth and body than sugar. All right, so it looks like we're going to stop there and go to do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. And remember, we talked about the, the question is going to be about uh, quick tips to prevent cavities after eating candy. And one was eating candy with plenty of water. Two was swishing vigorously afterwards with water. Uh, three, don't snack all day. Four, wait to brush. Okay? You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavika. You know what we're going to do? We're not going to do the contest. We have to do the contest, but before we do, you need to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kovitko's Question of the Day. Okay, and I just want to let you know that uh, you're going to have these flowers from DeSantis if you call in with the correct answer. The number to call is 614-459-9769. And the question of the day is, which of the following is a way to prevent cavities after eating candy? Is it A, eat the candy with plenty of water, B, don't snack all day, C, wait to brush, or D, all of the above? All right, uh, the number to call is 614-459-9769. And go ahead and call now. Go ahead and call now. So we just need to go to a break here. Here we go. We're getting it. <laughs> I think we had a... You won't believe it, though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else hidden in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. Hey, people don't take the time. Hi, I'm Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. Look for my smile on the big screen this summer, courtesy of Dr. Kavitko. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile radio and road show. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers. 
all in my office. And now, we have two locations. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit world's most interesting dentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. All right, we're back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. We have our winner on the line. I believe she has the right answer. This is this Cindy. Yes, it is. Thank you for calling, Cindy. And the answer is? D, all of the above. That's right. Did you know some of this you're on, on your own without listening? Yes, I did. I did. Are you in health care? I am. What are you? Oh, oh, am I in health? You mean it's my profession? Yes. No, I'm sorry. I thought you meant do oh. I currently have health care. Oh. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. What do you do I, for a living? Am, I am an executive assistant. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. You're the one that makes it all happen and don't get the credit for it, right? Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Cindy, thank you so much for listening and for calling in, all right? And stay on the line because sure. we need to get the address where to send you those flowers from DeSantis. Oh, thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, bye now. All right, if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode 588 of The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Today we're bringing you the complete guide to Easter candy. And I do want to mention, <coughs> excuse me, a couple comments from one of my Facebook uh, viewers. Aaron, he's written me and he says, uh, who wants uh, dried fruit in their Easter basket? <laughs> it's making me laugh. Aaron, if you can tell, that's, you're making me laugh. I keep looking over here. Anyway, <laughs> he wants to know how bad is coffee and chocolate? Coffee stains your teeth. Um... You know, people do like mocha, right? Mixed together in the same cup. And the same thing goes. If you're just going to eat it or, and drink it down, it's okay. Especially if you rinse your mouth with water afterwards, right? And, uh, and that's exactly what he just put. He just said, what if I eat the chocolate and wash it down with strong coffee? Well, that's good too, but you might want to get some of the strong coffee off your teeth, right? Because coffee stains. <laughs> and by the way, why is coffee stain an issue? It's because it makes the tooth surface a little bit dull. And things stick to, bacteria stick to uh, dull surfaces e easier than they stick to shiny surfaces. Makes sense, right? Okay. So, yeah. Let's go back to hear what we were doing. <coughs> if you have any more questions, uh, Facebook friends, feel free to pose them and I'll look over and try to answer them. Okay. Now, let's see. i got to find where we were. All right. <coughs> so, we did the best and the worst candies. And now, here are some healthy swaps. This is going to drive Aaron crazy, I think, because when I start... <laughs> great to, uh, to do this. So healthy swaps that are just as, uh, uh, well, we already talked about the ones that are just as bad, right? Like dry fruit and stuff. But um, um, there are some things that you can have, like people would say, well, how about if I just eat graham crackers? Okay? Because that's not, you don't think of that as sticky and gooey. The problem is, is graham crackers get stick in, stuck in your teeth just like uh, the sticky foods do. And they're, uh, uh, they can be, they can be worse, you know? Um, so things like what goldfish or white crackers or anything like that will still stick in people's teeth. So um, I'd like to mention this, and I, this is interesting because I want to tell you how cavities form. And I've used this on the air. I, I was doing a show, and I said, you know, what happens is, is the bacteria basically go into the bathroom in your mouth. And uh, Dr. Ben Henney mentioned this too, except he says uh, they poop in your mouth. <laughs> so. Uh, your oral bacteria loves simple sugars like crackers, pretzels, candy, and anything refined or coming from a package. When these bacteria have a feast, they excrete acid and a waste product. This acid is what etches away tooth enamel and gives you a cavity. Many people are shocked to find out that the number one cavity, cavity causing food isn't candy, it's the saltine cracker. Saltine crackers are a simple starch, meaning they convert acid just as readily as candy does, except in this case they stick in your teeth. Okay, so here are some alternatives uh, that we might consider. I'm not saying that I would eat all of these. I'm just saying if you're looking for some alternatives, um, because it is nice to give kids a choice, right? We talked about the dark chocolate. Um, uh, real eggs, okay? I mean, of course, we boil the eggs, we um, color them, but, um, you know, kids can eat them, and they're healthier than the candy that they might have had. Low-sugar chocolate peanut butter bar, okay? Sweet potato bunnies. Um, 
you know, taking sweet potatoes and making them in the shape of bunnies. I'm pretty sure Aaron's going to say he doesn't want that in his Easter basket either, but it is, <laughs> but it is uh, an option. And, you know, believe it or not, uh, kids often crave something green, so like broccoli or those little baby carrots. And, you know, if they eat those, either instead of or in addition to some candy, their little tummy fills up and they don't need as much, so therefore they're not eating as much candy. You probably don't need me to tell you the kind of things that you can be doing to help your children uh, be healthier. And, uh, you know, um, as a dentist, of course, it is something that I, I deal with every day, and I really, really hate seeing a little one, a three-year-old, coming in with six, eight, ten cavities. And I'm just, I just think to myself, what were the parents thinking? Well, the problem is, is I know this. I'm not judging because I know parents don't know that this can happen. And remember, one of the big uh, causes of uh, childhood tooth decay, when I say that I mean baby teeth, is nursing bottle syndrome, where the child is sent to bed with a bottle. It can even be of breast milk. There's lactose in breast milk. It can be, uh, but certainly you wouldn't want to send them to bed with a bottle or a sippy cup of juice, okay? Okay. So looking at the clock, let me just make sure I'm right. Now well, we can probably talk for a little bit longer. So um, let's see. We, we, let's talk about some of the healthy uh, suggested foods. Well, should we go to a break? Yeah, let's go to a break. I think we're going to go to a break. That's what we're going to talk about when we come back. It's going to be um, the good guy. Some suggested foods that you can sup supplement uh, the kids' diet so they don't eat as much candy. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, and we'll be right back. A little bit. I don't know who to be. I'm a paper cup, baby of the sea. I know you see it too, cause you're too much for me. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Greiger. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? <laughs> If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile, episode number 588. It is Easter. It's April 20... Let's see, what is this? April 21st, um, 2019. <laughs> oh yeah, it's on my, it's on my sheet. <laughs> it's also on my computer. Anyway. Okay, so I said we're going to give you some of the good guys, some suggested foods. So, fiber-rich fr fruits and vegetables. By the way, this is in an article that was uh, from the University of Rochester. Foods with fiber help keep your teeth and gums clean, according to the American Dental Association. They also get saliva flowing. Next to good home dental care, this is your best neutral defense, natural defense against cavities and gum disease. About 20 minutes after you eat something that has sugars or starches, your saliva begins to reduce the effects of the acids and enzymes attacking your teeth. Saliva contains traces of calcium and phosphate, so it also restores minerals to the area of the teeth that have lost them from the bacterial acids. Another one is cheese milk, plain yogurt, and other dairy products. I love cheese. I just love cheese. Um, it's another saliva maker. The calcium in cheese and the calcium and phosphates in milk and other dairy products help put back minerals your teeth might have lost due to other foods. They also help rebuild tooth enamel. Green and black teas. Both contain polyphenols that interact with plaque bacteria. These substances either kill or hold back bacteria. This prevents bacteria from growing or making acid that attacks teeth. Depending on the type of water you use to brew your tea, a cup of tea can also be a source of fluoride. And I recommend that you use fluoridated water. Uh, so those of you that have your water filtered, you need to uh, make sure you're either buying water for kids where fluoride is put back into it, 
or get with your dentist and have your water tested so that you can know how much water you need to put back in and you can mix it up yourself in, uh, in jugs of, gallon jugs of water. Okay? Sugarless chewing gum. This is another great saliva maker that removes food particles from your teeth. Foods with fluoride. So fluoridated drinking water or any product you make with fluoridated water helps your teeth. This includes powdered juices, as long as they don't contain a lot of sugar, and dehydrated soups. Commercially prepared foods, such as poultry products, seafood, and powdered cereals can also give you fluoride. Right? Because they're making it with city fluoridated water. It's very, very important. Very important. More than you realize uh, how much fluoride has decreased the tooth decay incidence. I mean, the number of cavities that we see now in kids is so much different than we used to, say, back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s and even in the 80s, but, um, but anyway. <clears throat> okay, now we've talked about the, uh, we've talked about the bad guys, we probably won't, um, I'll, I'll just give you the list, because again, this is from a different article, this is from the Rochester University folks, but it talks about sticky candies and sweets, talks about starchy foods that can get stuck in your mouth, and we mentioned, remember, we mentioned soda crackers, but that also includes soft breads and potato chips, okay? So, I usually don't like white bread for that very reason, but here, here's what you can do is if you're having a soft sandwich or you're having chips, follow it with some raw carrots or some celery. And there's this self-cleansing action that happens when you bite into something fibrous like, um, like carrots and celery. It cleans out, the, cleans out the potato chips, cleans out the white bread, right? You don't even have to go to the bathroom and brush. Although you, you still can and get rid of the stuff between your teeth, it won't get rid of those. And then something that I hadn't yet mentioned, oh, we talked about carbonated drinks. I blamed... Uh, Mountain Dew for everything, but that's not true. Every soda pop, whether it's clear or not, sugared or not, caffeine or not, gives acid off and will eat your teeth. So you want to avoid that. And, um, but what I didn't mention yet was substances that dry out your mouth. Those that, that include alcohol and many medicines. Uh, if medicines are the cause, talk with your, your dentist about getting a fluoride rinse. I always recommend that for people with dry mouth. And also a fluoride gel for brushing your teeth. Because there are over 400 over-the-counter and prescription drugs that dry out people's mouth, that decrease sal uh, saliva. In my office, in every office, in every operatory, I have, uh, um, I have um, uh, this, this piece of paper. It's like a laminated sheet, and it has a whole list of all of the drugs that cause tooth decay. I mean, that dry out your mouth. I mean, and pretty much if you have dry mouth, I, it's on, your drug is on this list. Okay, I've got to see what we're getting here. <laughs> So my Facebook buddy, he's saying, let me tell you how mad I would be if I get dehydrated soup in my Easter basket. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> keep it up, Aaron. <laughs> All right, so it looks like we're getting close to the end. i got to find out what time we are. Uh, in a nice way, he's distracting me. <laughs> anyway, okay, so, and remember what I said at the beginning of the show. I have a sweet tooth. I eat candy. And I, but I don't eat it all day. And if I have something stuck in my teeth, I immediately go brush. You can do that at a restaurant, folks. You don't have to wait till you get home, by the way. They all have sinks, right? They, by law, there's a bathroom in every building that opens is open to the public. There's a chance. And you can also start a trend at work by being the, the, the person that brushes their teeth. I was talking to one of my patients. I said, you need to brush more. How often do you brush? They said, well, I brush in the morning and then at night. And I go, what about, it? What about during the day after lunch? No, I can't do that. I'm at work. Yes, you can, is what I said to him. And if you come to my office right at lunchtime, you'll see four of us all walking around brushing our teeth in the uh, sterilization area. You know, everybody has their, their lips together on the brush and we're all brushing. It's just something you do. And I'm telling you, if you get the food off your teeth, if you don't let it accumulate in the first place, you're golden. Okay? It's looking like I'm pretty much out of time and I discovered that on my own without my producer having to give me the, the you know, your, you know, cut, cut, cut. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that's all the time we have today. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at Dr. Kavitko. Please visit my office Facebook page and like us. It's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. Remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko.
If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588. 